Greco-Buddhism, or Greco-Buddhism, is the cultural syncretism between Hellenistic culture and Buddhism, which developed between the 4th century BC and the 5th century AD in Bactria and the Indian subcontinent. It was a cultural consequence of a long chain of interactions begun by Greek forays into India from the time of Alexander the Great. The Macedonian satraps were then conquered by the Mauryan Empire, under the reign of Chandragupta Maurya. The Mauryan Emperor Ashoka would convert to Buddhism and spread the religious philosophy throughout his domain, as recorded in the Edicts of Ashoka. Following the collapse of the Mauryan Empire, Greco-Buddhism continued to flourish under the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom, Indo-Greek Kingdoms, and Kushan Empire. Buddhism was adopted in Central and Northeastern Asia from the 1st century AD, ultimately spreading to China, Korea, Japan, Siberia, and Vietnam. Historical outline The introduction of Hellenistic Greece started when Alexander the Great conquered the Achaemenid Empire and further regions of Central Asia in 334 BC. Alexander would then venture into Punjab land of five rivers, which was conquered by Darius the Great before him. Alexander crossed the Indus and Jhelum River when defeating Porus and appointing him as a satrap following the Battle of the Hydaspes. Alexander's army would mutiny and retreat along the Bees River when confronted by the Nanda Empire, thus wouldn't conquer Punjab entirely. Alexander founded several cities in his new territories in the areas of the Amu Darya and Bactria, and Greek settlements further extended to the Khyber Pass, Gandhara Taxila, and the Punjab. Following Alexander's death on June 10, 323 BC, the Diadochi or «successors» founded their own kingdoms. General Seleucus set up the Seleucid Empire in Anatolia and Central Asia and extended as far as India. The Mauryan Empire, founded by Chandragupta Maurya, would first conquer the Nanda Empire. Chandragupta would then defeat the Seleucid Empire during the Seleucid-Mauryan War. This resulted in the transfer of the Macedonian satraps in the Indus Valley and Gandhara to the Mauryan Empire. Furthermore, a marriage alliance was enacted which granted Seleucus's daughter as Chandragupta's wife for diplomatic relations. The conflict additionally led to the transfer of 500 war elephants to the Seleucid Empire from the Mauryan Empire, presumably as expenses of lives lost and damages sustained. The Mauryan Emperor Ashoka established the largest Indian Empire. Following the destructive Kalinga War, Ashoka converted to Buddhism. Abandoning an expansionist agenda, Ashoka would adopt humanitarian reformation in place. As ascribed in the Edicts of Ashoka, the emperor spread Dharma as Buddhism throughout his empire. Ashoka claims to have converted many, including the Greek populations within his realm to Buddhism. Here in the king's domain among the Greeks, the Kamboyas, the Nabaka, the Nabapamkits, the Bojas, the Pitnakas, the Andras and the Palitas, everywhere people are following beloved of the gods' instructions in Dharma. The decline and overthrow of the Mauryans by the Shunga Empire, and of the revolt of Bactria in the Seleucid Empire led to the formation of the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom 250 BC. The Greco-Bactrians were followed by the Indo-Greek Kingdom 180 BC, AD 10. Even though the region was conquered by the Indo-Scythians and the Kushan Empire first -third centuries AD, Buddhism continued to thrive. Buddhism in India was a major religion for centuries until a major Hindu revival from around the 5th century, with remaining strongholds such as Bengal largely ended during the Islamic invasions of India. Cultural interaction 
The length of the Greek presence in Central Asia and Northern India provided opportunities for interaction, not only on the artistic, but also on the religious plane. Alexander the Great in Bactria and India 331 BC. When Alexander invaded Bactria and Gandhara, these areas may already have been under Shramanic influence, likely Buddhist and Jain. According to a legend preserved in the Pali Canon, two merchant brothers from Kamsaboga in Bactria, Tapasu and Balaka, visited Gautama Buddha and became his disciples. The legend states that they then returned home and spread the Buddha's teaching. In 326 BC, Alexander conquered the northern region of India. King Ambi of Taxila, known as Taxiles, surrendered his city, a notable Buddhist centre, to Alexander. Alexander fought an epic battle against King Porus of Pauravas in the Punjab, at the Battle of the Hydaspes in 326 BC. Topic: Mauryan Empire, 322 to 183 BC. The Indian Emperor Chandragupta Maurya, founder of the Maurya Empire, reconquered around 322 BC the northwest Indian territory that had been lost to Alexander the Great. However, contacts were kept with his Greco-Iranian neighbors in the Seleucid Empire. Emperor Seleucus I Nicator came to a marital agreement as part of a peace treaty, and several Greeks, such as the historian Megasthenes, resided at the Mauryan court. Chandragupta's grandson Ashoka embraced the Buddhist faith and became a great proselytizer in the line of the traditional Pali canon of Theravada Buddhism, insisting on non-violence to humans and animals ahimsa, and general precepts regulating the life of lay people. According to the edicts of Ashoka, set in stone, some of them written in Greek and some in Aramaic, the official language of the Achaemenids, he sent Buddhist emissaries to the Greek lands in Asia and as far as the Mediterranean. The edicts name each of the rulers of the Hellenistic period. The conquest by Dharma has been won here, on the borders, and even 600 yojanas 4, miles away, where the Greek king Antiochos Antioga rules, and beyond there where the four kings named Ptolemy Turamaya, Antigonos Antikini, Magas Maka and Alexander Alakasu N Dara rule, likewise in the south among the Cholas, the Pandyas, and as far as Tamraparni. Ashoka also claims he converted to Buddhism Greek populations within his realm. Here in the king's domain among the Greeks, the Kamboyas, the Nabaka, the Nabapamkats, the Bojas, the Pitnakas, the Andras and the Palitas, everywhere people are following beloved of the god's instructions in Dharma. Finally, some of the emissaries of Ashoka, such as the famous Dharmaraksita, are described in Pali sources as leading Greek Yona Buddhist monks active in Buddhist proselytism, the Mahavamsa, 12, founding the eponymous Dharmaguptaka school of Buddhism. Topic. Greek presence in Bactria 325 to 125 BC Alexander had established in Bactria several cities Iconum, Bagram, and an administration that were to last more than two centuries under the Seleucid Empire and the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom, all the time in direct contact with Indian territory. The Greeks sent ambassadors to the court of the Maurya Empire, such as the historian Megasthenes under Chandragupta Maurya, and later Dimachus under his son Bindusara, who reported extensively on the civilization of the Indians. Megasthenes sent detailed reports on Indian religions, which were circulated and quoted throughout the classical world for centuries. 
Megasthenes makes a different division of the philosophers, saying that they are of two kinds, one of which he calls the Brachmanes, and the other the Sarmanes. Strabo 15, 1. 58 to 60. The Greco-Bactrians maintained a strong Hellenistic culture at the door of India during the rule of the Maurya Empire in India, as exemplified by the archaeological site of Iconum. When the Maurya Empire was toppled by the Shunga Empire around 180 BC, the Greco-Bactrians expanded into India, where they established the Indo-Greek Kingdom, under which Buddhism was able to flourish. Topic: Indo-Greek Kingdom and Buddhism, 180 BC, AD 10. The Greco-Bactrians conquered parts of North India from 180 BC, whence they are known as the Indo-Greeks. They controlled various areas of the northern Indian territory until AD 10. Buddhism prospered under the Indo-Greek kings, and it has been suggested that their invasion of India was intended to protect the Buddhist faith from the religious persecutions of the Shungas (185–73 BC), who had overthrown the Mauryans. Zarmanochagas was a Sramana, possibly, but not necessarily a Buddhist, who, according to ancient historians such as Strabo, Cassius Dio, and Nicolaus of Damascus, traveled to Antioch and Athens while Augustus died AD 14, was ruling the Roman Empire. Topic: <coughs> Coinage. <coughs> The coins of the Indo-Greek king Menander I reigned 160–135 BC, found from Afghanistan to central India, bear the inscription, "'Savior King Menander' in Greek on the front. Several Indo-Greek kings after Menander, such as Zoilos I, Strato I, Heliocles II, Theophilos, Paeacolaus, Menander II and Archibius display on their coins the title. Maharajasa Dharmika, lit. King of the Dharma, in Prakrit written in Karushthi. Some of the coins of Menander I and Menander II incorporate the Buddhist symbol of the eight spoked wheel, associated with the Greek symbols of victory, either the palm of victory, or the victory wreath handed over by the goddess Nike. According to the Melinda Panya, at the end of his reign Menander I became a Buddhist arhat, a fact also echoed by Plutarch, who explains that his relics were shared and enshrined. The ubiquitous symbol of the elephant in Indo-Greek coinage may also have been associated with Buddhism, as suggested by the parallel between coins of Antialchidas and Menander II, where the elephant in the coins of Antialchidas holds the same relationship to Zeus and Nike as the Buddhist wheel on the coins of Menander II. When the Zoroastrian Indo-Parthian kingdom invaded North India in the 1st century AD, they adopted a large part of the symbolism of Indo-Greek coinage, but refrained from ever using the elephant, suggesting that its meaning was not merely geographical. Finally, after the reign of Menander I, several Indo-Greek rulers, such as Amintas Nicator, Nicias, Paeacolaus, Hermaeus, Hippostratos and Menander II, depicted themselves or their Greek deities forming with the right hand a benediction gesture identical to the Buddhist Vitarka Mudra thumb and index joined together, with other fingers extended, which in Buddhism signifies the transmission of Buddha's teaching. Topic. Cities According to Ptolemy, Greek cities were founded by the Greco-Bactrians in northern India. Menander established his capital in Sagala modern Sialkot, Punjab, Pakistan one of the centres of the blossoming Buddhist culture. A large Greek city built by Demetrius and rebuilt by Menander has been excavated at the archaeological site of Sir Cap near Taxila, where Buddhist stupas were standing side by side with Hindu and Greek temples, indicating religious tolerance and syncretism. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <inaudible> Scriptures. Evidence of direct religious interaction between Greek and Buddhist thought during the period include the Melinda Panya or Questions of Menander. A Pali language discourse in the Platonic style held between Menander I and the Buddhist monk Nagasena. The Mahavamsa, chapter 29, records that during Menander's reign, a Greek Thera elder monk named Mahadharmaraksita led 30,000 Buddhist monks from the Greek city of Alexandria, possibly Alexandria on the Caucasus, around 150 kilometers (93 miles) north of today's Kabul in Afghanistan, to Sri Lanka for the dedication of a stupa, indicating that Buddhism flourished in Menander's territory and that Greeks took a very active part in it. Several Buddhist dedications by Greeks in India are recorded, such as that of the Greek Meritarch, civil governor of a province named Theodorus, describing in Karasthi how he enshrined relics of the Buddha. The inscriptions were found on a vase inside a stupa, dated to the reign of Menander or one of his successors in the 1st century BC. Finally, Buddhist tradition recognizes Menander as one of the great benefactors of the faith, together with Ashoka and Kanishka the Great. Buddhist manuscripts in cursive Greek have been found in Afghanistan, praising various Buddhas and including mentions of the Mahayana figure of Loksvaraja Buddha. Logoesvarozobodo". These manuscripts have been dated later than the 2nd century AD. <laughs> Kushan Empire 1st, 3rd century AD. The Kushan Empire, one of the five tribes of the Yuji, settled in Bactria around 125 BC, displacing the Greco-Bactrians and invading the northern parts of Pakistan and India from around AD 1. By that time they had already been in contact with Greek culture and the Indo-Greek kingdoms for more than a century. They used the Greek script to write their language, as exemplified by their coins and their adoption of the Greek alphabet. The Kushan king Kanishka, who honored Zoroastrian, Greek and Brahmanic deities as well as the Buddha and was famous for his religious syncretism, convened the Fourth Buddhist Council around 100 in Kashmir in order to redact the Sarvastivadin canon. Some of Kanishka's coins bear the earliest representations of the Buddha on a coin around 120, in Hellenistic style and with the word Bado in Greek script. Kanishka also had the original Gandhari Prakrit Mahayana sutras translated into Sanskrit, a turning point in the evolution of the Buddhist literary canon. The Kanishka casket, dated to the first year of Kanishka's reign in 127, was signed by a Greek artist named Agesilas, who oversaw work at Kanishka's stupas Cetia, confirming the direct involvement of Greeks with Buddhist realizations at such a late date. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophical influences Several philosophers, including Pyrrho, Anaxarchus and Onesicritus, are said to have accompanied Alexander in his eastern campaigns. During the 18 months they were in India, they were able to interact with Indian ascetics, generally described as gymnosophists naked philosophers. Pyrrho returned to Greece and founded Pyrrhonism, the first Western school of skepticism. The Greek biographer Diogenes Laertius explained that Pyrrho's equanimity and detachment from the world were acquired in India. Pyrrho was directly influenced by Buddhism in developing his philosophy, which is based on Pyrrho's interpretation of the Buddhist three marks of existence. Another of these philosophers, Onesicritus, a cynic, is said by Strabo to have learnt in India the following precepts. That nothing that happens to a man is bad or good, opinions being merely dreams. That the best philosophy is that which liberates the mind from both pleasure and grief. 
the philosopher Hegesias of Cyrene, from the city of Cyrene where Magas of Cyrene ruled, is thought by some to have been influenced by the teachings of Ashoka's Buddhist missionaries. Artistic influences Numerous works of Greco-Buddhist art display the intermixing of Greek and Buddhist influences in such creation centers as Gandhara. The subject matter of Gandharan art was definitely Buddhist, while most motifs were of Western Asiatic or Hellenistic origin. Anthropomorphic representation of the Buddha Although there is still some debate, the first anthropomorphic representations of the Buddha himself are often considered a result of the Greco-Buddhist interaction. Before this innovation, Buddhist art was uniconic. The Buddha was only represented through his symbols an empty throne, the Bodhi tree, Buddha footprints, the Dharma chakra. This reluctance towards anthropomorphic representations of the Buddha, and the sophisticated development of an iconic symbols to avoid it even in narrative scenes where other human figures would appear, seem to be connected to one of the Buddha's sayings reported in the Diga Nikaya that discouraged representations of himself after the extinction of his body, probably not feeling bound by these restrictions, and because of their cult of form, the Greeks were the first to attempt a sculptural representation of the Buddha." In many parts of the ancient world, the Greeks did develop syncretic divinities, that could become a common religious focus for populations with different traditions. A well known example is Serapis, introduced by Ptolemy I Soter in Egypt, who combined aspects of Greek and Egyptian gods. In India as well, it was only natural for the Greeks to create a single common divinity by combining the image of a Greek god-king Apollo, or possibly the deified founder of the Indo-Greek kingdom, Demetrius I of Bactria, with the traditional physical characteristics of the Buddha. Many of the stylistic elements in the representations of the Buddha point to Greek influence, himation, the contraposto stance of the upright figures, such as the 1st–2nd century Gandhara standing Buddhas, the stylized curly hair and Ushnisha apparently derived from the style of the Apollo Belvedere 330 BC and the measured quality of the faces, all rendered with strong artistic realism. A large quantity of sculptures combining Buddhist and purely Hellenistic styles and iconography were excavated at the modern site of Hadda, Afghanistan. The curly hair of Buddha is described in the famous list of the physical characteristics of the Buddha in the Buddhist sutras. The hair with curls turning to the right is first described in the Pali Canon. We find the same description in the Dasastasahasrika Prajnaparamita. Greek artists were most probably the authors of these early representations of the Buddha, in particular the standing statues, which display a realistic treatment of the folds and on some even a hint of modelled volume that characterizes the best Greek work. This is classical or Hellenistic Greek, not archizing Greek transmitted by Persia or Bactria, nor distinctively Roman." The Greek stylistic influence on the representation of the Buddha, through its idealistic realism, also permitted a very accessible, understandable and attractive visualization of the ultimate state of enlightenment described by Buddhism, allowing it to reach a wider audience. One of the distinguishing features of the Gandharan school of art that emerged in northwest India is that it has been clearly influenced by the naturalism of the classical Greek style. Thus, while these images still convey the inner peace that results from putting the Buddha's doctrine into practice, they also give us an impression of people who walked and talked, etc. and slept much as we do. I feel this is very important. These figures are inspiring because they do not only depict the goal, but also the sense that people like us can achieve it if we try. 
During the following centuries, this anthropomorphic representation of the Buddha defined the canon of Buddhist art, but progressively evolved to incorporate more Indian and Asian elements. <laughs> Hellenized Buddhist pantheon Several other Buddhist deities may have been influenced by Greek gods. For example, Heracles with a lion skin, the protector deity of Demetrius I of Bactria, served as an artistic model for Vajrapani, a protector of the Buddha. C. In Japan, this expression further translated into the wrath-filled and muscular neo-guardian gods of the Buddha, standing today at the entrance of many Buddhist temples. According to Katsumi Tanabe, professor at Chuo University, Japan, besides Vajrapani, Greek influence also appears in several other gods of the Mahayana pantheon such as the Japanese Fujin, inspired from the Greek divinity Boreas through the Greco-Buddhist Wardo, or the mother deity Hariti inspired by Taish. In addition, forms such as garland-bearing cherubs, vine scrolls, and such semi-human creatures as the center and Triton, are part of the repertory of Hellenistic art introduced by Greco-Roman artists in the service of the Kushan court. <laughs> <laughs> Exchanges <laughs> Gandharan proselytism in the East Greek monks played a direct role in the upper hierarchy of Buddhism, and in its early dissemination. During the rule 165 BC of the Greco-Bactrian king Menander I Pali, Melinda, Mahadharmaraksita literally translated as great teacher, preserver of the Dharma was a Greek Pali, Yona, lit. Ionian Buddhist head monk. According to the Mahavamsa chap. 29, who led 30,000 Buddhist monks from the Greek city of Alessandra, Alexandria of the Caucasus, around 150 kilometers north of today's Kabul in Afghanistan, to Sri Lanka for the dedication of the great stupa in Anuradhapura. Dharmaraksita Sanskrit, or Dhammarakita Pali translation, protected by the Dharma, was one of the missionaries sent by the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka to proselytize the Buddhist faith. He is described as being a Greek Pali, Yona, lit. Ionian, in the Mahavamsa, and his activities are indicative of the strength of the Hellenistic Greek involvement during the formative centuries of Buddhism. Indeed, Menander I was famously converted to Buddhism by Nagasena, who was a student of the Greek Buddhist monk Dharmaraksita. Menander is said to have reached enlightenment as an arhat under Nagasena's guidance and is recorded as a great patron of Buddhism. The dialogue of the Greek king Menander I Pali, Melinda, with the monk Nagasena comprises the Pali Buddhist work known as the Melinda Panha. Buddhist monks from the region of Gandhara in Afghanistan, where Greco-Buddhism was most influential, later played a key role in the development and the transmission of Buddhist ideas in the direction of Northern Asia. Greco-Buddhist Kushan monks such as Lokaksima c. AD 178 traveled to the Chinese capital of Luoyang, where they became the first translators of Buddhist scriptures into Chinese. Central Asian and East Asian Buddhist monks appear to have maintained strong exchanges until around the 10th century, as indicated by the Beziklik Thousand Buddha Caves frescoes from the Tarim Basin. In legend to Bodhidharma, the founder of Chan Buddhism, which later became Zen, and the legendary originator of the physical training of the Shaolin monks that led to the creation of Shaolin Kung Fu, is described as a Buddhist monk from Central Asia in the first Chinese references to him Yan Zanji in 547. 
Throughout Buddhist art, Bodhidharma is depicted as a rather ill-tempered, profusely bearded and wide-eyed barbarian, and he is referred as the blue-eyed barbarian by Yan Hu Bayan Hu in Chinese Chan texts. In 485 AD, according to the 7th century Chinese historic treatise Liang Shu, five monks from Gandhara traveled to the country of Fusong, the country of the extreme east, beyond the sea, probably eastern Japan, where they introduced Buddhism. Fusong is located to the east of China, 20,000 li 1, km east of the state of Da Han itself east of the state of Hua in modern Kyushu, Japan. In former times, the people of Fusong knew nothing of the Buddhist religion, but in the second year of Da Ming of the Song dynasty AD 485, five monks from Kippen Kabul region of Gandhara traveled by ship to Fusong. They propagated Buddhist doctrine, circulated scriptures and drawings, and advised the people to relinquish worldly attachments. As a result the customs of Fusong changed. Chinese. Fusang zai da han guo dong er wan yu li de zai zhang guo ji dong qi su ju wu fu fa song da ming er nian ji bin guo chong yu bai chu wu ren yu xing ji qi guo lu tong fu fa jing shang jiao ling chu jia feng su sui gai. Two half brothers from Gandhara, Asanga and Vasubandhu, fourth century, created the Yogacara or mind only school of Mahayana Buddhism, which, through one of its major texts, the Lankavatara Sutra, became a founding block of Mahayana and particularly Zen philosophy. Topic: <laughs> Greco Buddhism in the West. Intense westward physical exchange at that time along the Silk Road is confirmed by the Roman craze for silk from the 1st century BC to the point that the Senate issued, in vain, several edicts to prohibit the wearing of silk, on economic and moral grounds. This is attested by at least three authors, Strabo 64 BC, c. AD 24, Seneca the Younger c. 3 BC, AD 65, and Pliny the Elder AD 23 the aforementioned Strabo and Plutarch c. 45 also wrote about Indo-Greek Buddhist King Menander, confirming that information about the Indo-Greek Buddhists was circulating throughout the Hellenistic world. Zarmanochegas Zarmaris Zarmanochegas was a monk of the Sramana tradition possibly, but not necessarily a Buddhist who, according to ancient historians such as Strabo and Dio Cassius, met Nicholas of Damascus in Antioch while Augustus died AD 14 was ruling the Roman Empire, and shortly thereafter proceeded to Athens where he burnt himself to death. His story and tomb in Athens were well known over a century later. Plutarch died AD 120 in his Life of Alexander, after discussing the self-immolation of Kalanus of India Kalanos witnessed by Alexander writes, "...the same thing was done long after by another Indian who came with Caesar to Athens, where they still show you the Indian's monument," referring to Zarmanochegas' tomb in Roman Athens. Another century later the Christian church father Clement of Alexandria died 215 mentioned Buddha by name in his Stromata BKI CH15 The Indian gymnosophists are also in the number and the other barbarian philosophers and of these there are two classes some of them called Sarmanai and others Brahmins and those of the Sarmanai who are called Hylobi, neither inhabit cities, nor have roofs over them, but are clothed in the bark of trees, feed on nuts, and drink water in their hands. Like those called Incratites in the present day, they know not marriage nor begetting of children. 
Some, too, of the Indians obey the precepts of Buddha, Buddha whom, on account of his extraordinary sanctity, they have raised to divine honours. Buddhist gravestones from the Ptolemaic period have also been found in Alexandria in Egypt, decorated with depictions of the Dharma wheel. The presence of Buddhists in Alexandria at this time is important, since it was later in this very place that some of the most active centers of Christianity were established. The pre Christian monastic order of the Therapeutae is possibly a deformation of the Pali word, Theravada, a form of Buddhism, and the movement may have almost entirely drawn its inspiration from the teaching and practices of Buddhist asceticism. They may even have been descendants of Ahsoka's emissaries to the West. <inaudible> Buddhism and Christianity Although the philosophical systems of Buddhism and Christianity have evolved in rather different ways, the moral precepts advocated by Buddhism from the time of Ashoka through his edicts do have some similarities with the Christian moral precepts developed more than two centuries later – respect for life, respect for the weak, rejection of violence, pardon to sinners, tolerance. One theory is that these similarities may indicate the propagation of Buddhist ideals into the Western world, with the Greeks acting as intermediaries and religious syncretists. Scholars have often considered the possibility that Buddhism influenced the early development of Christianity. They have drawn attention to many parallels concerning the births, lives, doctrines, and deaths of the Buddha and Jesus. Bentley, Old World Encounters. The story of the birth of the Buddha was well known in the West, and possibly influenced the story of the birth of Jesus. Saint Jerome, 4th century AD, mentions the birth of the Buddha, who he says, was born from the side of a virgin. And the influential early Christian church father Clement of Alexandria died AD 215 mentioned Buddha, Buddha in his Stromata BKI, CH 15. The legend of Christian saints Barlam and Husafat draws on the life of the Buddha. See also Greco-Bactrian Kingdom Gandharan Buddhism Indo-Greek Kingdom Greco-Buddhist art Index of Buddhism-related articles Religions of the Indo-Greeks Secular Buddhism Buddhas of Bamyan Kushan Empire Mathura Piro Notes <laughs>